This is a video that was shot um, in the back of a moving ambulance on a closed course. The two paramedics are very seasoned and are delivering care in a standard way, uh, that being giving manual CPR and manual ventilation via endotracheal tube on a mannequin. What you'll notice is how much they're getting jostled around, especially the provider that's giving CPR, delivering chest compressions. Um, as the next video comes up and you see the comparison, what we think is a much safer way to deliver chest compressions and ventilations in the back of a moving ambulance is that by using the auto vent device and the auto um, pulse device, which allows both providers to remain seated, restrained, and essentially hands free uh, during the cardiac arrest resuscitation in the back of a moving ambulance. And we think that's a much safer option for our paramedics. My name is Dr. David Slattery. Uh, last name is spelled S is in Sam, L-A-T-T-E-R-Y. And your position is? I am the uh, EMS Medical Director for Las Vegas Fire and Rescue. EMS providers are in danger on two levels in a moving ambulance. First of all, when they're traveling code three or lights and sirens to an emergency or taking a patient to the hospital, they are a great danger. In fact, most of the ambulance crashes occur during this code three driving. And one of the major reasons is that the providers assume that other drivers will yield the right away and also assume that they both see and hear the ambulance, and that's just not true. The second level of danger for providers in a moving ambulance is something that's probably unrecognized by most providers, and that is the danger that they put themselves in when they're delivering critical patient care in the back of a moving ambulance cardiac arrest patients, burn patients, psychiatric patients, all those types of patients require the paramedics to be standing, caring for that patient, and often they're unrestrained, often they're standing, and often they have their hands busy doing something, either chest compressions or ventilation or starting an IV, et cetera, and they're not available for their personal protection and balance. Safety is a high priority at Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, and to that end, we've provided our paramedics with tools to help keep them seated, restrained, and hands-free as possible during transport of critical ill patients such as cardiac arrest patients. We've employed an auto vent device which allows our providers, once a patient is intubated, to be hands-free and let the ventilator deliver the, the rescue breaths. We've also employed an auto pulse device which delivers consistent chest compressions um, in the back of moving ambulance, so the paramedics do not have to stand doing chest compressions and getting jostled all around in the back of a moving ambulance. It allows that provider, which is in the most danger, uh, to be seated, restrained, and hands-free during the transport while they're delivering care to that critical cardiac arrest patient. The most important thing that I want EMS providers to be more aware of is the danger that they put themselves in when they're delivering patient care in the back of a moving ambulance. Often, these are the sickest of patients that they're taking care of. And their focus, rightly so, is on taking care of that patient and saving that patient's life. But the, what they need to realize is, as often as possible, they need to be restrained, wear their seatbelts, they need to be seated at all times, if possible, and find technologies to free up their hands so that they have their personal balance when the car or ambulance changes direction. The most important thing I want the public to know is absolutely, when you hear or see an ambulance, 
with their lights and sirens going. You've got to pull over, you've got to stop, and make it as safe as possible for those providers. Because it's a very dangerous time for them when they're traveling Code 3 in the back of a moving ambulance. Thank you.